session for, for a musical, for a musical play, because, you know, you might be wondering how to do that, you know, because you'll be crying so like, I, I can't do it. I'm in the house right now, okay? a series of examples on what not to do when you're auditioning for a musical play, okay? Thank you. <laughs>
No, I forgot after. I have a poem here by the author Silly Graves. It's entitled, Parents are the Hardest People to Please. <laughs> you act as though you were never like me before. Like you were never young and foolish and far from a model student. Did you forget that once you walked in my, that you once walked in my shoes, when you would fall into your stupidity, toes and feet first, play with life, although many times you were told to rehearse, jumped into relationships and choke and choke and, and chose the research. Like you ain't been there, done that, and bought the t-shirt. Like you never had a dream that would they would strive for. One that you were well, willing to dedicate life for. You act as though you were perfect. When you parlay your knowledge as though you were born equipped with it. I'll say it straight, most parents are hypocrites. <laughs> I'll say it openly, that in that most instances, parents are right. But it's not about our decisions being right or wrong. It's more about using your experience to sympathize. To sympathize and let us know that you understand where we're coming from. At least that we can take that in all seriousness and then decide, but instead, it's I'm big, you're small, I'm right, you're wrong, and there's nothing you can do about it. You make your decisions sound irrational, impractical, when I'm sure, when a time, you had an exact same thought. When you probably didn't know what you wanted to do with your life by the time you were 18. And it not already achieved by 25, and when it came to everything else, it was all about patience and time, right? But when it came to me, in my life, those things, those things no longer apply. Because I have to be great tomorrow. My plans have to come, have to work out today. If I'm not a millionaire right now, then all my efforts have been in vain. We look up to you as our teachers and our leaders. How are we supposed to achieve success if the person that's supposed to be our biggest fan is never in the bleachers? What about the ones that are constantly emphasizing the importance of having a backup plan? The kicker is a backup plan concept, because I don't even need to explain it. Because everyone knows what I'm referring to. But let me put it like this. How comfortable do you feel standing, in the, uh, standing on the front line with a general who keeps emphasizing your role and its importance but spends his whole time investing in the reinforcements? Just think for a second, because if you know you would be standing on the front line, oh wait. <laughs> because if you show more interest in the person's backup plan than the actual plan, then you're actually accurately, fractionally, factually, impractically, tactically, didactically, and drastically showing where your faith in his plan actually stands. Stop trying to overshadow, but understand us kids. Eventually, when they become adults, any success they have rather than just contributing. I bet you'd rather say that you were actually a part of it. So ask them what their dream is. How and what we, not they, we can do to achieve it. Your children are your biggest asset. So invest time in speaking. Invest time in listening. Invest time in hearing. Invest time in learning how to play pro evolution soccer, fashion trends, and sing Beyonce. Invest time in not just being a responsible adult. And I agree, you spoil the child, you spare the rod. But ultimately, we just want you to believe in us. Because the family is the strongest cooperation you can have.